This is Unscripted Coding. Welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to be looking at the Tesla 3, uh, Tesla Model 3 service manual. Now, it is mind blowing to me when my friend brought this up, saying that these manuals used to cost $3,000 a year, and right now they're being offered free. Now, to my eye, it looks like an instruction manual. Now, granted, I know next to nothing about cars, but it seems ridiculous to me to charge a subscription fee for an instruction manual. So what I want to do is pull all of this information out and see how we can organize it uh, afterwards. I'm doing this completely from scratch right now, but I'm noticing, of course, that it is a web format. So the initial plan of just saving it as a PDF or a Word document might not be ideal, and it might make the most sense to actually save it all as um, as HTML file or uh, an offline website. Uh, we'll we'll take deeper looks into this, but um, let's just see. We have all sorts of different uh, web pages. Now I'm noticing right here that uh, they are each individual HTML files. So that's really good. And <clears throat> what we probably want to maintain is this, this particular um, navigation system somehow. Uh, it could be that we convert this into um, a PDF uh, bookmark or table of contents. I'm actually not sure how to do that. But alternatively, we could save all of this onto onto a local file, uh, onto a local folder and keep this table of contents or, or this navigation system all in one separate file. So looking at this, I think this frame might be separate from this particular um, article. So we might want to save just what the main content is for each, each document and strip the sidebars and the overall web page. Uh, the other reason you might want to do this is that uh, you do need to log in to, to actually, um, you do need to log in to actually see this web page. So if you don't strip everything else from the website, I don't know what kind of scripts are in here, but it might prompt you to log in even if you are accessing it offline. Uh, we're going to muddle around and take a look, but I, I don't think this is all that daunting. What you're going to do is, uh, one way or another, uh, download all the files. If you just straight save the HTML files, that is incredibly simple. If you have to manipulate and script some of these things, it's not all that difficult either. But either way, I think we're going to throw it through um, something like Beautiful Soup on Python, um, which can pull out all the links and all the tags and so on in uh, HTML code. And we're just going to crawl through it. So when we see this, you're going to see various links. And we're going to have to go and click into that document and that document and save all of them. Now I'm hoping Beautiful Soup will be enough, but it's very possible that we're going to need to use, um, we're, we're going to have to crawl through this some other way. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, we might, yeah, we, we might actually want a web browser so that you can log in and, and, uh, you can actually log in and, and have a user interface to look at. Okay, so I am going to get started. Uh, I think I'm going to have to take a closer look and maybe save a couple of these files flat out or script out to see how they react. And then we'll see. Uh, the other thing that occurs to me is that these articles seem pretty plain as well which means that we might be able to, to take the articles and mash them all together into one PDF file. I don't know if I really want to do that because if you save it as a website, you're going to retain all of the, 
the documents. And I there are so, so many pages in here that there might be actual quirks that are important. Um, features, clickable links, uh, images, how all of those interact, I'm not too sure. So keeping it in its original format is going to help us out. Okay, so I ran into a couple problems already, and I thought I'd just catch you up to date because we have our first kind of success here. Um, right off the bat, I thought we'd use some sort of automated browser, and I chose Playwright just because that was the most recent one. Uh, I used to use Selenium a lot, but um, it's bulkier and it's not as intuitive. So I thought, hey, let's do Playwright. Um, the problem I ran into was every time I tried to log into Tesla, uh, it would allow me to put in a fake email and then it would just block me. So I tried doing a real email offline. Uh, that didn't work. I tried to change a user agent, which is what you tell the other side you're using. Um, you can say whatever you want. And in this case, you know, Windows uh using whatever browser and they might have been picking up on playwright's browser to say mm, uh this isn't a normal user agent we're just gonna block them uh so i used my actual user agent um what i'm using on my computer that didn't quite work either same problem it's being blocked and so i went into a bit of research and it looks like there are services out there that um block selenium or automated browsers and there are all sorts of people doing all sorts of things to try and get around it they're detecting what sort of variables you're using uh well i'm not going to pretend i know what i'm doing but uh, they have a bunch of uh solutions so akamai distill networks um those are all able to block it <clears throat> this is where these guys came in. There is Selenium Stealth, which I assume takes all of these different strategies that people have come across and packaged it nice and simple for you. And I was a bit concerned because it is two years since last update, but it worked like a charm. So uh, let's, let's just show you really quickly. We can get rid of this playwright code now. We're importing Selenium. We're going into Tesla account. Um, we're just going to start debugging and we get to, we get, um, straight to the Tesla page. And this time we can get to password. And then of course it quits because we didn't actually write any of the code, but it got past that initial hurdle. Uh, what I'm going to do is move this all into secrets as well. So obviously, I don't want to put my account out there. Actually, it's not even my account, but I don't want to put an account out there on the World Wide Web for everyone to see and use. So I will be putting it into secrets, but it's not all that difficult. We're just going to the URL, 
finding uh, the box for your email and your password and then clicking a button. And then we're going to come down and go to uh, the web page. But I'm realizing right now we probably don't want to delete this stuff yet. So let's get to it. All right, so I did quite a bit of work off screen because um, what happened is I have to keep uh, logging in while I do the scrape. And of course, I don't want to keep um, showing you guys a secret file. But um, while doing that, I hit a number of errors that, um, that made it a bit more challenging. Now, you'll see at the bottom that I am scraping right on the side here. One, two, one, and two. Um, onto the next ones, onto the next files, and they're all being saved into a giant list here. There are some 950-ish, I think 955 or 954, uh, different HTML files, and then separately, uh, we have to download a ton of images. Now the images are fine, but the 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 HTML files were proving problematic, and I am rerunning it right now. And you can see I am using pickle, uh, Python pickle to save as I go along. So I'm going to stop this right now, and we're going to explain uh, what code we've written and why we've written it this way. All right, so if you remember, we started trying to do uh, Playwright, using Playwright to do this. Uh, that didn't work out so well, so we can take this out entirely. And we start from our imports. We have to import Selenium. Uh, this is the automated web browser. Uh, it is a little tricky. Uh, it depends on what version of Chrome you have installed on your computer. And you got to download the correct web driver to put into your folder. So make sure you get the right Chrome driver in your file. Uh, Selenium Stealth is an amazing, amazing um, piece of software that simplifies everything for you in terms of avoiding uh, being detected as, as a scraper, basically. So you want to install this. Um, and the basic settings seem to work great. And then I have installed requests and pickle will, will also explain that as we go. These are basic standard packages. Uh, also I have put aside a secrets file that logs into the Tesla page that has my, um, email address and password in there. It really is the same process. It's just moving. Uh, these two pieces away from, of course, my screen recording. So right off the bat, this is basic um, Selenium. You open up a web driver. In this case, we're using Chrome. And then we have a couple basic options as well. Uh, in this case, we want to use our Stealth. And I think it just flat out tells you what kind of platforms you're using. Doesn't seem to matter, but that did get us past that hurdle where Tesla was blocking us. Uh, afterwards, we logged in. You go to the Tesla account page, enter your email and address, and then finally, we get to a service manual. Now, what's very strange is it tells you that you're a web page or you don't have access to the correct web page. For whatever reason, I didn't really try and figure it out because right afterwards it would launch a new tab with the actual 
um, manual. So waiting for this tab to lock, I just put a sleep timer on it, wait 10 seconds, and then uh, go to the new tab, move to the next window. Um, not the most elegant way of doing it. I also bought myself a bit of time between the entry of uh, your username and your password. No real good reason here other than internet was tripping up and sometimes it took more than two seconds for it to process. So I just bought myself time of 14, 15 seconds. That's not so important as long as I get the 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 correct working. Uh, finally, what you do is you take the whole web page, you get the the under HTML. So every web page has two t uh, a HTML at the bottom and at the end encompassing everything. You get the outer HTML, which means including that tag, and you get your whole web page all in one go. And there we use basic uh, open an index file and save it. Now the index file is special. It is the first file and it doesn't follow the rest of the naming convention, which is uh, GUID and a bunch of random strings afterwards. That's why we're saving it specifically and we're going to set a couple global variable. We're going to throw index.html right into the first set of visited ones. We have a list of banned HTMLs. We didn't actually make great use of it, but essentially it is all of the uh, privacy and legal contact pages at the bottom. It turns out what we were concerned about was just email addresses. We could get rid of them. That wasn't a big deal. We never actually make use of it. And then we're going to start a running list of what URLs to visit next. Um, also, we're going to go through and download every image that shows up because there are quite a few images that show up in the manual. Okay, let's just move this down. Um, what is interesting and why I'm going through all of this pickling, now let's finish going through this. Um, once we have the source code and we've written it down, we're going to throw it into Beautiful Soup's HTML parser and find all the A, which are the links, and all the images and get all of the links, hrefs and sources. Uh, these are all not full HTMLs, meaning there's no HTTPS, you know, Tesla.com. Instead, they are just GUID 1234.html, meaning they're all relative, which means you don't have to fix any of the links between these files. It is fantastic. But uh, there are a couple things to worry about. They tend to link straight to the JPEG as well, so you want to just uh, collect the HTML files. Uh, there are a couple kind of email mail to Tesla support at tesla.com, so you want to start with the GUID as well. Um, but the trick here is you want to make sure that you don't just keep ballooning this upcoming URL and just keep revisiting the same uh, index or GUID123. So you want to make sure they're not in the band one, they're not already in the upcoming URLs, and they're not in where you've already been. Uh, so once you do that check, you keep adding to future uh, upcoming URLs. Uh, same with images. Um, we just want unique images, and how we're handling it is we're going to look at it all in one pass at the end. The images actually turned out to be the simplest part of this spray, um, but it was the last part we did. Okay, here's the last bit of trick. Uh, pickling is saving your variables, saving you know your lists and so on um, for a future session. So it's really handy if you're running long analyses or long scrapes to save what you've done already, pickle it, and then run it again next time to unpickle it. In this case, we're going to open um, the existing file, meaning we're going to restart from the previous session, 
uh, every now and then I have something like uh, session saved. Um, I guess not yet. Here you go, session saved. So every 50 or so URLs, I say I'm going to save what I've done so far. Why am I doing this? Well, number one, it, 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 by my estimate, it takes about 30, 35 minutes to run through this whole thing. But the other thing is Tesla seems to log out, log you out after 250 or so links. Uh, they're probably doing this as some sort of anti-scraping tool. So every 100 or so visits, I just stop running and then uh, restart. So I log in all over again and, and redo. Um, what the problem is, and you'll see this in my last scrape, is that it created a lot of these uh, one kilobyte files, which are just saying you have you don't have access to the file. That's what happens when you log out, of course. So pickling allows you to save your session, and I run this once every hundred or so pages. And so it is kind of a manual task. I'm sure you can automate it, but not not so important to me. All right. Here we go. Um, this is the big part. Every, for each URL, while upcoming URL still exists, while it's not empty, we're gonna of course go through it and then um, and then remove it from the upcoming URLs. First of all, we do this pickling thing. If we visited uh, fifty. Uh, if we're exactly at number 50 or 100 or 150 um, of the visited URLs, we're going to pickle. Um, we're going to dump what the visited band incoming and image URLs are and save it out. We're going to save the session. Next, we're going to go to the web page only if it starts with GUID and ends with HTML. Now, we're, we've done this check a couple times. I don't know why it keeps flipping through. But if not, we if it's not the right format, we're just going to remove it from upcoming URL, skip it. Otherwise, we go to that web page. <clears throat> and then we're going to find that whole HTML piece, get the outer HTML, write it down, um, save the file, and then we're going to update all of these URLs. We're going to... Say we visited this current URL, remove it, and print out some of these numbers, some of these stats that we're using right now. Finally, we go through the exact same thing. HTML parser, we're going to find all the links, all of the images, find the href and the source, and save it appropriately. We have all of the same checks as before. It's the same code. Uh, not perfectly elegant, but we're doing it because index right at the start was a bit of a special case. All right, the next part, and I am going to uncomment this, but the next part is we are going to save all the files. We're going to uh, load the images after we've visited all of the all of the text and the idea was I separated this out uh, saved all of the images separately in a different session but basically I went for each well first of all I cleaned each of the image URLs removed the ones that didn't quite fit the format and confirmed that all JPEGs PNGs and GIFs that is true Finally, um, what I did was set a user agent, and I actually used Python's request method. Um, I saved the cookies. So when you run this, if you want to skip this whole middle section, that's fine, but you still have to log in. You take the right cookies so that you are appearing to Tesla to be running the same web browser, the same session, and then you just go through each one and download it. Um, you get the, the PNG, the GIF, the JPEG file, and you just write it into your file. Uh, finally, I just take a bit of time and then I quit. I'm just going to wait for the next session. And I'm going to stop and continue running afterwards. But basically, that's all it is. What is interesting is Tesla did have a few 
uh, sections, a few, uh, what do you call it, a few uh, protections against scraping that's generally a lot more advanced than what I've seen before. And if we look at what we've scraped, you're going to see, you know, the manual well done. Oh, uh, see, this is one of the one uh, kilobyte files. The search, of course, is not working. Uh, we're not using their APIs. But also the other thing you should take a look at is uh, just saving their CSS and uh, some of their design language. It is absolutely unnecessary because it looks extraordinarily close already, but um, some of, you know, taking their exact fonts might help a little bit. I notice also that it's not perfect. So we, I, I couldn't get their uh, SVG, their uh, carrots, basically, their down, uh, pointing down triangles that uh, indicate you can open up more files for whatever reason. Uh, it's probably hidden in some of their JavaScript, but you can see, uh, for the most part, it works very well once I've actually gone through everything that we need. So uh, hopefully that was interesting and useful. Let me know if it isn't, but I will see you all next week for another video.